We're back. Appreciate you hanging out with us. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Bill Colarillo in for Derek and Tone. I am Rob Ellis. Uh, if you could hit the like button, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, friends, we appreciate it. All right, digress for a minute to uh, to some Sixers, Bill. I don't know how much you got a chance to see last night, but they beat the Lakers 138 to 94. And B goes for a triple double 30, 11, and 11. Uh, team now 12 and 5 on the season. Two observations from the game. A, the Sixers played extremely well. Embiid and Maxi were phenomenal. The Lakers couldn't have been more disinterested, uh, discombobulated, uh, brutal. Uh, collectively, it had it had a it had like a like a late January uh, feel to it in terms of players not caring, and we're only in still November, uh, but. It's part of the issue with the league. But anyway, give me your thoughts on what's going on with the Sixers. Hit the nail on the head, man. Maxi and Embiid played really well. You talk about the triple-double that Embiid had. He didn't even play yeah. in the fourth quarter. It was play a rest. Amazing. But the two ga- the two-man game that Embiid and Maxi play, and when they play it well, it's almost impossible to stop. And you saw it last night. Every read they made was right. And when they're hitting their shots, they're a tough team to defend. But Lakers did look disinterested, and that's the problem with this league. You said it, and I've said this multiple times, that this in-season tournament, the NBA Cup that they're trying to roll out, to me, should be a cautionary tale for the NFL. Because what makes the NFL so damn great is that every game matters. And with basketball, and with hockey, and with baseball, there's so many games that every regular season game doesn't matter. So now you have the NBA trying to implement an in-season tournament to make regular season games mean something. And the reason I say it should be a cautionary tale for the NFL is be careful how much you extend this regular season. They went from 16 to 17. We know they're going to go to 18. That's inevitable. But I think they better stop there because we love that the NFL is a week-to-week league, man. One week we're going to the Super Bowl. The next week we want our coach fired. That's just the beauty of the NFL because it, every game matters. And you saw it last night. Lakers didn't care. That game didn't matter. They could lose that game. They were disinterested. It was a random Monday night in November. So just be careful, NFL, that you don't turn into the NBA with way too many games. But, hey, don't take anything away from our Sixers. They dominated start to finish. Well, really not start to finish. Lakers did come out Lakers strong. Lakers started off well, actually. It, yeah, Lakers yep. started out, out strong in the first quarter, and Embiid, it looked like he was going to be in some foul trouble. Two fouls early. Smart move by Nick Nurse. He rolled the dice. Great job by Nick Nurse, and I think they switched to a zone defense at that point to try to protect him, which is a good sign that they have the ability to do that down the stretch if they need to. But, look, my goal for this Sixers team is just keep winning, Stay relevant, stay in the playoff top eight eight spots for this playoff spot so that when the trade deadline gets here, we have the assets now after they got rid of Harden, they finally have some flexibility that maybe a player becomes available that we can make a move for and make some noise in this Eastern Conference. Because as good as they are right now, and Maxi may be your most improved player in the NBA this year, I still think they're missing that third piece. So just keep winning these regular season games. Keep in the top eight so that you get a playoff spot. Well, actually, right? Doesn't the top 10 get into the playoffs now in the NBA? Yeah, Yeah, (laughs) then there's the play-in. Yeah, you get the the play-in. But just stay relevant so that we have some options with Daryl Morey at the trade deadline. But a big win. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it right now, they're tied for the second-best record um, in the Eastern Conference. Pretty impressive, right? I mean, 12 and 5 uh with the Magic and with the Bucks. The only team ahead of them right now is the Celtics, who are 13 and 4. I mean, and, and and if you go out the West, the, the best record in the West is 12 and 4. So they they have the second most wins in basketball um to start. So I think you, you all things considered, as chaotic as it was in the beginning of the year, we didn't harden status, he was still here for a minute, you know, new coach, you know, the whole thing. I'd say if you're a Sixers fan, and I get it, most Sixers fans are going to respond, call me in this, you know, when they get to the second uh, round. I get it. I understand. But if you're a fan of the team and a fan of the sport, they are fun to watch. 
they have been an enjoyable team that gives you effort. I feel like night in and night out. Um, and again, you, you don't want to jump in. Don't, don't jump on, but it's, it, they have been fun to watch. And if you're again, Maxi to me is pure entertainment. The way that he plays the game, the speed in which he plays the game, the heart in which he plays the game, uh, you know, 31 and eight last night, but you're right. It, they have become a killer, killer combo. He and he and Embiid, they have really found their rhythm now. And I think it's obvious. The nice thing is you've cut away a lot of the fat and it's just like, it's those two and then it's everybody else. And you know that with Harden being out of there. That's the nice thing. And they're well coached. Yes. Look, we we all complained about Doc Rivers over the years. And one of the worst things was, God forbid you question Doc Rivers after a game. Oh. I mean, how dare you question Did you the question great Greg Popovich and that Doc matter? Rivers. Exactly. Yeah. And I think they are really well coached. And you're seeing it. And they are a fun brand of basketball to watch. And they're a likable team. You know, one of my problems with this team was I wanted to like them. I wanted to like James Harden, but he was yeah. a tough guy to like. You knew yeah. what his past was. He was hard to really get. You knew he wasn't going to probably be here very long. It was only a matter of time before he turned. You had the whole Ben Simmons fiasco. Now you have a likable team. Maxi is impossible not to like. Constantly has a smile on his face, plays really aggressively. He's not Allen Iverson. He's not on that level, but I love the way he plays it with speed, kind of mm -hmm. the way Allen Iverson played with speed approaching the basket. And they have some other really likable guys on this team. I think Pat Bev's a likable guy. Ubre was likable to me until this whole, yeah, whether I, I don't know, conspiracy theory, whatever that the thing, hell's that's going on. That's been real quiet, man. Crazy, man. Somebody. He, got by the to, way, he may be back on this road trip they have coming up. He he might be back for for this weekend. Yeah, and I I hope he is because I did like what he added to this team. And the Anthony Melton's likable, especially when he's hitting shots, man. So they do. They're a likable team. If you're a fan of basketball, if you're a fan of the Sixers, get on. Because, look, I don't have any crazy visions that they're going to win an NBA championship with the way they're assembled right now. Maybe. But they are fun to watch. And they do have flexibility that when the trade deadline comes, they may be able to add a piece to put them over the top. Yeah, absolutely. And that, to me, is going to be so interesting to watch. Like, if you're still in this kind of contention, like you're close, you're, you're third, you're fourth, whatever you are, you're right there in your conference. Do, if you're Daryl Morey, do you say, man, we got a shot right in front of us. We add a piece to this Embiid maxi thing. You know, this is a little more wide open than it's been. Let's make a move. Or do you say, look, we got ourselves back in a position where we can really be players this offseason. With all the money that we have, all the guys coming off the books, it's basically going to be just Embiid and Maxi, and I think Jaden Springer or whatever. But like everybody else is gone. Do I just hang on to all these expirings, let them walk, use those first rounders, and go crazy in the offseason? I, I, it's a really tough call for, for, for the front office. I just I think you got to make a move when you can make it, hopefully sooner rather than later. How many more years do we have of Joel Embiid playing at this MVP level? He's going to be 30 in March. He's yep. not, not a young guy anymore, and he's a big guy. An old so you, 30, too, with that body. Yeah, he, he's going to start to deteriorate quickly. I just don't want to waste any year. So if somebody's available, I say, hey, go all in. Because as good as the Celtics are, as good as the Bucks are, they're beatable. They're not the Golden State Warriors from a couple years ago where you just knew they were going to dominate everybody. So I'd like to see them make a move if someone comes available. I know Zach Levine was a guy a lot of people were talking about earlier in the season. That's kind of quieted, though. I haven't heard anything about him getting moved now. Yeah. That has been quiet. And there look, that's a that that's a classic case of NBA limbo. The hell, you know, the Bulls. It's like they've been okay the last they're not good this year. They're five and thirteen, but they've been okay the last few years, but not good enough. It's exactly precisely where you don't want to be in that league. You either got to be, you know, good or really bad to be able to get good again. Um, so I, I think they are gonna make moves, the the Bulls. I think there's gonna be some pretty good players available, but do you want to take years on? That, you know, that's the yeah, thing. That's the, the, other, the other thing you could do is you can make a move and just take on a guy who's expiring also, you know, and, and, and see what it what it nets you this year. But you make a good point with Embiid. Not only how many years do you have left, but how's his patience level? You know, another year where you're bounced in the second round, at some point, most of these guys in this league say, to you know, look, I want a chance to win. I want to go elsewhere. And it, how close is Embiid to that point? Like, he seems to love the city. 
you know, obviously gets along with Maxi. I think he really likes Nick Nurse and, and all. It's the only professional place he's ever played. But he's he's looking at it like we're looking at it. Like I've been in this league for a long time, man. I'm 30 years old. I want a chance. So that's the danger of not doing anything, just hoping that he'll continue to be patient. And that's one of the major issues with the NBA is if a star wants to leave, they're going to get out. Yes, they, they they control where they play now. It's it's a different world these days. So I agree with you. How much longer is Embiid going to be patient? Definitely, Nick Nurse helps because he is a good coach, and I think yeah. Embiid does respect him, and he's got a great relationship with Maxi. But yeah, they can't keep wasting these years. And look, I know Embiid won't admit to this, but part of the reason they haven't gotten out of the second round has been Embiid hasn't played well enough in the playoffs. Yep. So he needs to play better as well. So I hope that he wouldn't just say, "Hey, I'm gonna." I'm going to jump ship here and go somewhere else because he's also been part of the issue why they can't get out of the second. Yeah, like I, and I don't pretend to know where he is, his mindset is. But yeah. you're right. There, there's got to be some accountability. The, the common denominator, you know, it's been Brett Brown. It's been Doc Rivers. Now it's Nick Nurse. It's been, you know, Ben Simmons and Harden. You know, we we all know the, the, the cast of characters that have run through here. But who's the, who's the guy who's been here the whole time through all that? It's Joel. And whether it's he's not healthy enough, or just doesn't show up in a game seven, like that Boston game, like he and Harden didn't show up, whatever, man, like you've been here too. So there is definitely, there is ownership that should be taken, but we know a lot of times in the league that ownership isn't taken by the players. They just view it as get me on to another place. that gives me the best chance to win. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and, and, and you know, look, Jake makes some good points. Do they get out of the second round? I, I don't know, Jake. I mean, if I look at it right now, if you're asking me, I'd probably lean towards no, I'm being honest. Not with the way they are, not with the way the team is assembled now. And then you figure probably in the second round they're going to have to play the Bucs or the, or the Celtics most likely. And that's that's a tough ask in a seven-game series, right? They play seven games in the second round, don't they? Yes, yes. It used to be five five games at one point in the first oh, no, round. No, second round, I'm sorry. That, 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 the, 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 fir- the second round, yeah, the second round seven. They played Boston. And it was seven games last year. Yeah, it, it, are all of them seven now? I keep forgetting because the NBA changed. It Not all be, of them. Not all of them. They no. keep add, changing their, their playoffs. Yeah, system. like, what? Uh, so I guess they would, that would be called the divisional, and then it'd be the semis, right? So the divisional would be seven, if that makes sense. The series prior to that, for example, let's just go back to last year, okay? So last year, we know they lost in seven to Boston in the second round. They beat Brooklyn, if you remember. Uh, actually, they, they did. They made the first round seven games, too. Yeah, first round seven, two. I'm looking at it yeah. now. Yeah, first yeah. round seven, two. It used to only be five, That's I correct. think. And then they, they realized they needed to short it but uh, or extend it. So, yeah, so it's tough to try to beat a team in seven games. You could sometimes upset a team in five games. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Seen... You, uh, the, maybe the lesser team only having to win three could help Exactly. You almost, but when yeah. you have a seven-game series, it's tough to beat a team that's that's better than you, that's more talented than you are. So, But, hey, another team in this town, Rob. Yeah, let's go some Flyers. Yes, you know I'm going there. Let's Is this Philadelphia Flyers team? You talk about Nick Nurse has the Sixers playing some good basketball. John Tortorella has this Flyers team playing some really good hockey, and I try to talk about it on my show, but I know a lot of our listeners and viewers aren't hockey fans. Yeah. But if you are a hockey fan, this Flyers team's fun to watch. They're talented. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say they're talented. They have some young talent, but they're playing really good hockey. Tortorella has them playing really hard. They had won five in a row. They did lose to the Rangers, bounce back. Yep. Winning on Saturday against the Islanders, and they have a big game tonight. Tonight's a big one against the Carolina Hurricanes. Both teams, two and three in the Metropolitan, they're a fun team to watch. They no, play hard. They are. Um, it, you know, if you're looking at the Flyers, are right there. The Flyers have played one more game. But the Flyers are eleven nine and one. Carolina's twelve eight and zero. So you, they're just a point behind them right now. Um, I, here's what here's what I like, and I heard Keith Jones talking about this, and, and I thought it was dead on. He said, um, "Any he would. He for, I'll, I'll hit a couple things that he that he mentioned. He said any deal we make is always with an eye towards the future. Um, if it gets us better now in the interim, great. But we are not going to sacrifice the future to make a deal. We're done doing that kind of thing. I love hearing that. Which means, hey, if we're surprisingly in this thing to make a playoff run, and we we feel like there's a young guy who's buried on a bench somewhere, and he can help us going forward, we're going to make a move. We're not going to not make a move." 
Um, but I think what they're doing is, Bill, they're learning on the fly without a losing culture. In other words, the Sixers went through the process and didn't worry that all that losing would kind of give you loser vibes. And I think that it, that kind of thing rubbed off a little bit on Embiid and, and some of the other guys when they were in the middle of it. They're not Flyers aren't trying to do that. They're trying to win, but also do it the right way through draft picks, through smart moves, you know, being cap sound and all those kind of things. They finally got to a point where they knew band-aiding this thing wasn't going to work anymore. And it took them forever to get to that point. Dude. So I think they get it. I think they're headed the right path. Are they a playoff team? I think they can sneak into the playoffs for sure. Um, are they a great team? No. I mean, they, you just see they they lack talent. You really see it on the power play. You see it in certain situations. But they play tough. And all you're doing this year is weeding out the guys who you don't want going forward. And, and it's cool to be in on the ground floor of what's happening with them right now. Absolutely. And, and in the offseason, I'm thinking, oh, man, this is going to be a long time before these Flyers are fun to watch again. Yep. And they're fun to watch. They, they are. are fun to watch because, like you said, they don't have a ton of talent, but they do have some good young talent. They're playing really, really hard. They're getting good goaltending. Carter Hart's been playing well. Even Samuel Urson, their backup goalie, is giving them some good He's games. He's playing well. Yeah. He's giving them some good games. And you're seeing some bounce back years from some guys because – Travis Sanheim was a defenseman on their team that I was really high on when they got him, and he didn't have a great couple of years. He's bounced back in a big way. He's playing a lot of minutes. Yeah. Leads the team in points, is in the top five, I think, in the NHL in, in time on ice. So he's playing a lot of hockey, but they got some good young players too that are just fun to watch. And you see now Morgan Frost is starting to contribute a little bit. Farabee's still contributing. So if you guys were hockey fans and you tuned them out over the last couple of years, it may be a time to put them back on because they're not a bad product. I think Tortorella woke Frost up. You know, I, I think he, I think there were certain guys that got accustomed to, hey, I'm, I was drafted where I was drafted, and it's kind of a right, not a privilege. And Tortorella, it doesn't matter who you are, especially on this kind of roster. You'll, yeah. you'll be a healthy scratch in two seconds if he doesn't like something he's seeing in practice. You can trust me when, when I tell you that. And we were talking about a lot of Philadelphia fans miss those Buddy Ryan years of yeah. the, the Blitzen. Well, a lot of Philadelphia fans miss the Broad Street Bully years. And they're not the Broad Street Bullies, but there's a couple guys on this team that are not afraid to drop the gloves. You got Nick DeLaurier. Yep. You have this other guy, uh, Garnet Hathaway. I mean, they throw their body around, and they will drop the gloves. So they're fun. I, I've been really enjoying watching these fly guys. I agree with you. I, and I, I think it's – the other thing is just uh, – this is like a bigger picture thing. It's just good for the city to have them relevant again. I mean, it, there have been so many years where it was just like, like you almost got annoyed thinking about them or talking yeah. about them. And and now it's back to you at least think that they're they're being run the right way. And you know the other thing that's important. I know this this doesn't seem like it's important, but it is to have faces of people that you want to trust, that you want to like, Jonesy, Briere, those guys, as opposed to the corporate whatever that was you know, for, for a bunch of years, it's just, they're in a much better place. I think in the Philadelphia community, uh, they're still fourth in the pecking order. It's going to take them a while to chip away at that. And I think the Sixers uh, in, in a similar way, people were annoyed and frustrated and kind of had enough with the Harden stuff, but getting Harden out of here, bringing in Nick nurse, I think sort of reinvigorated a lot of people with the Sixers team because they were they were on in that very same category. Like it was more more discussed. The Flyers, it was apathy. With the Sixers, it was discussed. And I think people are back for both of those teams. Definitely was a smart move by the organization to name Briere and Jonesy to high level roles. Because you're yeah. right. Once you guys have likable guys and Jonesy, it's amazing he jumped from being Obviously a player, but then he was kind of a you know silly, inappropriate guy on the radio, and now he's running this damn Flyers team, and he's such a likable guy. So, yeah, I'm all in. I'm all in, and I don't think, like I said, that they have enough talent to to make it to the Stanley Cup or anything like that. But if they could stay relevant and sneak into the playoffs, man, I love playoff hockey. I agree with you. I agree with you. All right, last one on the Eagles, and then we'll we'll break and we'll dive into our NFL segment, but. Did you see what Hassan Reddick had to say regarding the uh, the Niners? Loved it. That was great. Loved. Well, I loved it because, you know, a lot of times these players will just say, oh, well, you know, it's just 
any other game. But yeah. I just love that he was honest and said what everybody else has been saying. Where look, you guys been whining now for a year. Now come back, come back to our building and let's do this. Yeah, this is courtesy of KYW and Dave U. Ram. Quote: Talk is cheap. Uh, they get to come back in the link. It was a lot of boo hoos last year, a lot of crying, a lot of what ifs, a lot of this, a lot of that. They get a chance to come back in here, line that bleep up, and prove it again. Good, good for you, man. I mean, it's okay to acknowledge that you know what we get. We we heard it. You know, we heard all of it. We heard we heard about Jalen was a quarterback, a system quarterback from a kicker. We heard you know basically your coach, every one of your players. Like if I was John Lynch, Bill. I would have put a stop to that really early in the offseason. Like, yo, guys, enough. I get it. You feel however you feel. I don't want to hear any more of it. it but, but, you know, he didn't. And I like John Lynch. But, like, I thought it was ridiculous how long the crying went on with these guys. It was nonstop. It was nonstop. Yeah, Debo, Debo Samuel was on oh. shows. And, I mean, and, and then, I mean, look, you expect that kind of stuff from maybe their their sports talk radio. But the fact that it was coming from the players and it went on for so long, I agree with you that no one in the 49ers organization said, hey, guys, enough's enough. You, you're making yourselves look bad here. Like, there's no way that Nick Sirianni slash Howie would not have addressed this real quick. And that's where I give the Eagles credit. Is bad, You know, there were a lot of things that went on in the Super Bowl. Obviously, the turf, but there was the, the hold on Bradbury and all that. And, and Bradbury, to his credit, immediately, yeah, I helped. You know, I, I held my bad. Uh, and, and and most of the players really went out of their way to avoid any of the, the turf stuff as well. I thought the Eagles handled their business a lot better uh, than, than San Fran has handled their business for sure. But, hey, look, I guarantee you we have not heard the end of this thing. It's only going to ramp up as this week goes on. Once these guys get back to practice, and the Eagles aren't practicing today, though they're back at it tomorrow. But once everything gets back, woo, look out. This week is going to be nuts. This is going to be absolute playoff kind of feel of a week. Well, you mentioned some of the whining and some of the things that were said. I don't know if you said it. Debo Samuel literally referred to James Bradbury as trash. trash. Yeah. And doesn't year. regret it, by the way. And doesn't regret it. So I agree. I mean, look, it's only Tuesday, and we're already fired up about this 49ers game. I think it's going to – and you're already seeing it on all the – the sports shows and sports center and the NFL. This is going to be the game of the week. A lot of people are waiting for this, but probably none more than the Philadelphia Eagles fans. Cause we could not wait to get this team back yeah. in the link. Unbelievable. All right, let's uh, let's come back. Let's dive into the NFL. We'll get a little bit more into the Frank Reich thing. David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers spoke today. He made one thing really abundantly clear, which I want to, I want to throw at you and, uh, and the audience as well, but I want to get into a bunch of other stuff regarding that because there was more fallout besides Reich. We'll talk about who else got, got whacked. A bunch of moves around the league. Some injuries to watch out for uh, as well. So we'll get into a bunch of stuff. You and I haven't really gone over the games from last week as well, so we'll do that also. So we got a lot to do between now and the end of the program. He is Bill Calarulo. I am Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Time for me to tell you about the great folks at Flynn Tree Services. Yes, Flynn Tree Services is an experience licensed and insured Pennsylvania tree services company that will trim or remove any unwanted trees off of your property. They offer cost-effective solutions to any tree problem that you may face. They are experts, experts, excuse me, at trimming all types of trees and they serve Southeastern Pennsylvania, South Jersey and Northern Delaware. You could go to their Facebook or Instagram page for more information or to get a sampling of their work. Give Flynn Tree Services a call at 610-850-2800. 48610-850-2848 or online at flynntreeservices.com. That's flynntreeservices.com.